fine. Fine. You know what? We'll do the boogie rap first. Fine. Fine. Here we go. I started this channel back in 2006. Vlogging and rambling and bit after bit. The viewers showed up, the viewers subscribed. It's because of me that this channel's alive. Sure you joined the game, but you joined it too late. You're screaming and crying, dude, you're irate. If I were you, I'd be better off dead. Good thing you're a figment that lives in my head. Your sister hates you and she's all that you've got. But she's played by my wife, so at least she's hot. Everything that happens in your life, you see, happens because I... To you written by me. I can make you angry. I can make you sad if you don't behave. By the way, if any of you don't know why I did the Amogus there, uh, there's, <laughs> let's just say the future for Boogie and his wife was not very bright. <laughs> I'll take all you have. I'll take away your games. I'll write your defeat. I can even put your ass out on the fucking streets. <laughs> Each subscriber you have, the first thing that they see All your viral things, sorry little old me Your bullshit doesn't bring them out to our page So shut your bitches, you're here to see me rage It's the things that I'm in that get on TV I'm the reason Ray featured until the equals three The videos you post are a terrible bore I'm the one who unboxed that PlayStation 4 My rage videos are why people care Without those videos, no one would be aware That you even exist, that you even got a life You owe me it all, including your hot wife I bring in the view so I bring in the bus, you bring all the tears with your sad bad luck I'm running this channel, if you ever have a doubt Boot up your vlogs and check the view Ow, ow, ow. The things that you said, I guess they're true I wouldn't have the views if it wasn't for you Good thing I decided to dream you up I just wish I hadn't dreamt you so fucking dumb Sure, Francis, you're the man of the hour But I'm your god, I have all the power If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be around So get back in my head and set the fuck down Wish that imagination could make you less broke Your terrible childhood is my favorite joke I'm tired of this rock and I'm tired of your shit Let's see what happens when I fucking quit no, seriously, I'm out of here. Seriously, I don't want to do it. I'm not doing this anymore. I know I was winning. I don't care. I don't care that I was winning. I'm just fucking done. I'm just going to see this fat ass rage. Let the head get pissed off for a change. Seriously, I'm fucking out of here. I'm fucking done. Fuck that guy. Hey, wait a minute. Where's, where's my part of this? Yeah, Boogie called me. He said, Jesse, come on up from Texarkana. We'll put you in the rap battle. He said he wrote me a part and everything. No, seriously. Seriously, where? How can we be done? How can we be done? I ain't done nothing yet. That was possibly the worst thing I've ever seen. And if you're someone like me who's been following the long, long story of Boogie2988, uh, it's even worse. Um, because uh, a lot of that was like weird lamp shading of, um, let's just say, uh, moments of questionable well-being that uh that boogie 2988 has displayed on stream um but fun i don't think that was fun i think that was it was a type of cringe that's also just sad <laughs> okay it's it, it's it was it went it, it surpassed cringe and went into it was so bad it's so bad it, oh it's 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 not even high effort. Like, um, you got it. You got what you wanted. You got what you wanted from me. You shook me down. And uh, okay, look. Uh, let's just say, Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight uh had a a lot of. Hmm. He had a lot of angst about being defined by his Francis character that he unironically vented about and sometimes literally freaked out about on his stream. So him making a rap where the central issue is that uh, is is a struggle between him and Francis in that way 
it's like a uh, it's like a crappy lamp shading of his actual real emotional issues that are relatively public knowledge for his enormous channel. Um, very cringe. Uh, but all right. Boogie blatantly tries to use his trauma to get people sympathy, and at a certain point, it's just manipulative and annoying. Guys, Boogie2988 tried to convince his viewers to jump on board to his s fucking bullshit ass uh, random crypto coins, which he then promptly lost all of his money on. And then after selling, after shilling a bunch of crap coins to his audience, which he lost all his money on, he then turned to his audience and begged them to bail him out because he has no money anymore. Boogie2988 is like, he's like a, uh, he's like an internet legend for the worst reasons ever. His channel is like a dumpster fire that just never stops burning. No, you know what? It's more like a tire fire. Um, it's just go god damn, okay? Deep Fat Fried did an episode on him that's really good. Oh, I believe that. Um, I've, I've been following Boogie for a really long time. I used to, when I was a lot younger, when I was like much younger, uh, I, I quite liked Boogie. And, uh, for a while I actually bought in to some of the Boogie character. Not the, obviously the Francis character everybody knew was an act, obviously. Like he did a video, the famous Francis video is him like, um, is him like, uh, 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 you know, screaming about World of Warcraft or something. And and another one where he's screaming about Diablo 4 or Diablo 3, I guess. It was Diablo 3 at the time. Diablo 4 is the one that's coming out now. Um, but he would do a lot of these streams. Uh, he would stream and get very, very, very personal uh, about his life, about his emotional state, about his relationship with family members, about his relationship with uh, his wife. Um, and a lot of them were, let's just say, very, very manipulative. And it got worse and worse over time to the degree where he would, he would sometimes basically start crying on stream and then yell at his chat for not supporting him enough. Like we're talking like DSP levels of emotional manipulation for subs. It was very uncomfortable and very, very weird. Um, additionally, he's, um, politically one of the like stupidest youtubers and yet he always always feels the need to commentate on politics he's been trying to play this game of like i'm i'm just a i'm just an everyday centrist um while he goes on shows like h3h3 and talks about how he thinks gay people should have just waited more patiently for gay marriage. Uh, he's an embarrassing and very strange person who has made a turn, a continual turn for the worst over the years. I'm not gonna say he hasn't like suffered or anything. He absolutely very obviously had, uh, has. It's just like he tried to build a person, like he tried to have a dual, uh, like, after making one persona, the Francis persona, he then created a separate persona for himself as this like perpetual nice guy. Um, and despite the fact that he's not a perpetual nice guy in any way, he constantly tried to sell himself as like the internet nice guy. It was a, a perpetual part of his pitch to his audience and why they should support him. It's, it's wild. Very, very parasocial. Very, very strange. Did he, def he defended Justin Roiland recently? That doesn't surprise me at all. How would you compare his streams to Wings of Redemption? Um, Wings of Redemption, God, that's a hard comparison because they're very different types of, uh, they're very different types of, of, of person. Uh, I guess there are some overlaps in like, in like the, the, in being incapable of, st of like tapping the brakes to stop making their problems worse like boogie is one of those people who he he will always post his way through it every single time the man just cannot stop posting no matter what he posts through everything in his entire life um he like 
has made so much of his life public in the, in an attempt to like continually build a narrative. It's just a very weird thing. Wings has like, <laughs> are they not the same guy? No, as it turns out, just because two people are fat does not mean that they're the same person. I know might come as a little bit of a shock to some of you out there, but uh, yeah. Wings of Redemption has like an insane amount of hate, but I mean, so does Boogie, but also Boogie is like one of those people who like, Boogie used to, Boogie used to like live post like an absolute fuckload on 4chan. Like, God, there's so much, there's so much random shit that he would do. That's like, that he, that has just disappeared into the past. I, I don't know. His food review parody is a surrealistic work of art. There's a, by the way, there's a lot of people who call him Boogie 1488. And the reasons for that are, I'm sure you can imagine why they might call him Boogie 1488. Um, he, he's had some political takes in the past that are, uh, let's say questionable at best. Uh, like I said, I mean, he literally went on H3H3 H3 and said that he thinks that gay people should have just waited a, a little bit more patiently for the right to get married. Um, which is certainly a take. Um, I think in fact, if I, if I remember that correctly, that was an episode where I think Filthy Frank was on that episode with him, but just like hanging out in the background and you can actually see him react in real time. Oh my God, look, this is his latest video. Boogie, this is from his channel, okay? First of all, Boogie's channel has 4.02 million viewers and this video from a month ago only got 90K views. Four million subscribers and his video from a month ago got 90,000 views. Just think of that ratio. Do we want to react to it? Let's just see. Let's see if this is him like crying and, and pretending uh, uh, to be like, uh, there are tons of videos about my downfall, the rise and fall of Boogie 298 from massive to passive. This is probably him complaining about people I've been on making YouTube. fun of him, which by the way, I should say, um, any YouTuber that gets really, really, really famous. I mean, you guys know how much fucking bullshit I get. The hate that any public figure gets is absolutely demented and deranged. Um, but let's just say some content creators take it to the next level with, uh, like trying to use sympathy as like a as like a justification for more and more and more money and more and more parasocial attachment. It would be like if every single day I opened up stream by just reading mean comments that people said to me and then say and then saying afterwards like this is the reason why you guys need to give me more money. Like it would be it would be beyond the pale. All right, let's see, let's 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 give his latest video a uh, let's give his latest video a shake. Let's give it a fair shake. I, again, I have not seen this video. I've been watching Boogie for a long time. I don't know why we're on a Boogie stun lock, but here we are. Let's do it. For 17 years in my career has definitely seen better days. And every time I post a tweet or a video or a short, people are there to remind me that I definitely fell off and I would like to talk to you today a little bit about how I got here what happened and how I feel about it because I think it's interesting and I think people deserve to know my first video was just goofy and dumb and it was me just acting weird and being fat not too different from the shorts I upload these days but this was 16 years ago and of course I mean, nobody watched the first few videos, even though I was one of the only people on the platform back then. And I'd always been a big fan of sketch comedy, and I was working at this game store. So we had a lot of free time and a lot of customers coming in, so we would film these sketch videos. And I don't know, that's kind of something I'd always wanted to do. Huge fan of Saturday Night Live, Second City, stuff like that. I wanted to do this kind of thing. And I kept laying around that formula. And eventually I got it right with the Francis character and got my very first viral, and it pushed me over wow huge numbers like half a million views and 
10,000 subscribers. I mean, those numbers were unheard of back in the day, but I managed to pull it off. And for some reason, people kept watching as I continue to experiment with that. I took those subs and- Yeah, the audio mixing is really weird on this video. Subscribers and that energy, and I started making more sketches with my friends, and I started making sketches with my wife, who was an integral part of all of the Francis team. I mean, she helped write and clean up and act in the sketches, and I rode that momentum for, good Lord, nearly a decade. Back in 2018, I got divorced and me and my ex-wife separated as a comedy team and as well as my husband and wife. And we made our very, very last video together called Francis Gets a Band. Is Boogie like super, super bad or was it just the weird crypto thing? There are a lot of interpretations about Boogie 2988. I don't feel comfortable denouncing him in whole uh, as like a super, super horrible person. Um, but I do think, uh, that he is very, hmm, careless. He's very manipulative. Uh, and also his politics are terrible. Um, he's not like a Sieg Heiling Nazi. Um, but then again, he does play defense for some really, really horribly bad people. Uh, he isn't like... Uh, a, a member of the Fourth Reich, but then he goes on to H3H3 H3 so show and says with no irony um, that he thinks that gay people should have just waited a little longer uh, uh, to get their rights. He is insensitive. Uh, he's duplicitous. He tries to sell himself as like an internet nice guy, but in truth, he's kind of just an asshole. Um, yeah. And also, he's just kind of a weird manipulative coward when it comes to the internet um he has been embroiled in an in an un unbelievable amount of drama um shit stirring uh he said like really fucking deranged things about other people including personal people in his life that don't have the platform to respond to him um and then when he gets flack in return, he does videos where he's basically just like, give me money because I, you should feel bad for me. It's very, he's a very weird guy. I'm not saying he's like the worst guy who's ever lived or that he's like super, super bad, but he's a very strange individual. Uh, thank you, Demon Mom. I never really thought of him as all that awful in comparison to some of the people we've seen. Well, he's not all that awful compared to the people that we we review on this channel. Like, we talk about, like, some of the most disgusting people on the planet, like Steven Crowder and Matt Walsh. Obviously, like, we're talking about some pretty seriously bad political actors, and he's not that bad. He just simply isn't that bad. Um, but he does play cover for that type of stuff, and he does have a massive platform that he's incredibly careless with and also very stubborn with while trying to pretend that he's just like a, ooh, woo, I've done nothing wrong, I'm the victim always. It's very weird. Yeah, we review actual fascists on this channel. Boogie is not an actual fascist. Uh, at least he doesn't seem like he's an actual fascist. He could be, but yeah. Abandoned by his sister. Uh, we wrote this, produced it together. It was our very last thing. And it, genuinely, I thought I could not do the Francis sketch anymore because she was such a huge part of it. And uh, I tried to pivot, tried to find something else to do on the channel. And you know, pivot, I did. I mean, I'd always been making these personal videos since way back in, in 2009, talking about life and the universe and eating in front of the camera and just sitting down and bullshitting with you kind of the way I am now. And people didn't watch them as much as they did the comedy sketches, but they did seem to enjoy them. And I kept making these types of videos and, and people kept watching and I was, I was pretty grateful. Problem was, I'm a really sensitive guy, and I probably have definitely shown that to you over the years. Uh, my marriage was wonderful, and I was very glad to be married, but it eventually fell apart, and we fell out of love, and we went our separate directions, and I did not handle that well at all. Add to the fact that I got gastric bypass surgery, and I was losing weight, and I was not able to turn. Yeah, when he says he did not handle uh, the marriage thing well, uh, let's just say he handled it really, really, really badly. Uh, he made so much of it public, even though his wife did not have the platform to respond to any of the crap that he said. He, for a long time, for a really long time, he basically framed himself as like 
basically like the ultimate victim, even though that's not even close to truth. Um, but of course, there was nobody, no one had a platform to actually respond without uh, provoking the ire of his massive, massive fan base. It's, it's, it was a really fucking bad, uh, like an interpersonally bad situation. Turned to my favorite thing in the world, other than my wife, which was food. And uh, it was a pretty dark time for me. I became more mentally ill than I had ever successfully been throughout the years of my life. And uh, that's really saying something. I became just a complete and utter insufferable asshole. And you could definitely see that on my live streams. You he called his ex-wife on stream multiple times to make her feel bad about it ending. Yes, that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. Um, like... Yeah, that type of stuff. Like I'm going, I'm going to have, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people watching me, and I'm going to put you in a position uh, without you knowing it, and all of this type of stuff. It is, yeah. This is not the believe it or not video. We're doing that after that. We're we're talking about boogie for a few minutes. You could definitely see that on my YouTube channel, and people were picking up on it, and they were sharing it and spreading it. They were putting it out every chance they got. Every time I made a mistake. Every time I made a, an off-color joke, every time I got upset, every time I got sad on live stream, any of this stuff. Every time I did any of that stuff, it spread like wildfire because, you know, I was still fairly notable as a creator and I was showing my real self and unfortunately that real me was not a great person. Another thing I was doing during that period of time was making these gaming news videos. And they were fairly successful. People were tuning in to hear me talk about video games and the news surrounding them. And I felt really good about it. And on top of that, I was getting sponsors who would tune in and they would advertise on the channel just like everybody else has ads these days. You might wonder why I don't have sponsored ads anymore. It's because people who were upset with my antics and some of the stupid things I had said and done were writing my sponsors in mass to try to make sure I wasn't sponsored anymore. And when they were... Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen. Yep. We were finally successful and I got dropped by most of my sponsors. I decided I'm done with the gaming news series. I had this very negative association with it, the same way I had a negative association with the Francis character. And I just couldn't enjoy doing it anymore. So I left it to the other experts in the field. By the way, my lovely, lovely imps, if you are here and you've been having fun with the grab bag of variety content that we've had tonight, first of all, press the like button on the on the video, and secondly, subscribe. Subscribe to this amazing channel where you get to experience all of the fun, random stuff that we go through, in addition to me reviewing movies, talking about politics, 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 politics on a regular basis, um, and also talking about video games and playing video games. If you uh, enjoy all this, smack that subscribe button, ring the bell, and press like. Thank you very much, my lovely imps. Oh yes, and also consider subscribing to the Patreon. The Patreon is growing slowly and surely, and over time we will do more, provided that the Patreon becomes more popular. One other factor that goes into what I'm describing is that I got my teeth fixed back then. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't get my teeth fixed for looks. I got them fixed because I had 17 teeth left out of the 32 you start with, and 14 of those were infected. So I was dying of infection. My teeth hurt all the time. And this company out of Dallas reached out and offered to do these implants for free. And I took them up on the opportunity and people hated my teeth. The people who are already being critical of me for being such an asshole started being critical about my looks as well. And I got it worse for the new teeth than I ever did for being fat. I never really understood it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I looked in the mirror and I knew those teeth were a little too big for my face. I didn't like them very much either. I was just glad to be out of pain. Over the years, I've gotten a little more used to the new teeth and I kind of like the way they look now. But at the time, I understand why people were so frustrated and irritated by it. And all of these factors were just like a perfect storm for me. You had the divorce, you had the declining views, you had the extreme criticism that the internet was offering, you had the fact that I had bypass surgery, and all of this just made it really difficult for me to handle my shit. And I did not handle it well. In 2019, I decided I was done with YouTube, I was done with the world, and I was going to shuffle the hell out of here on my birthday, 
of July 24th, 2019. I was going to do a live stream, give my money to charity, and then afterwards exit off this mortal coil. In the end, I chickened out and decided to stick it out and did everything I could to just keep my mind together. Okay. Uh, there is so much that's being talked about here. It is absolutely horribly shitty that people made fun of him about his teeth. Um, losing your teeth fucking sucks. Uh, having to get uh, like dental implants because of, uh, you know, if uh, some people just have, are genetically predisposed to lose their teeth. That's just how it goes. Like it, it absolutely sucks. Like there's no doubt if no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And obviously people have always been absolutely horrible to him about his weight, um, which is again, also horrible. It doesn't, uh, making fun of people about their weight, even if you believe, um, even if you're like, I mean, first of all, obviously Francis, or not Francis, obviously Boogie, I almost called him the character name. Uh, obviously Boogie uh, is somebody who, um, is somebody who's like, he his health was truly in danger because of how overweight he was. Um, and he knew that and he recognized that. Um, but even if you're not that large, even if you're not as big as Boogie is, um, people are ruthless about your weight and they will mock you with the with with the stated goal of like helping you uh to lose weight or whatever it n doesn't help obviously like at all it doesn't help anybody there's there's been study after study after study and also it's common sense mocking someone because of something they're struggling with is not going to help them get better at it it just doesn't work that way um uh however with all of that said um, this, th what, what he's talking about right now is not the first time that he's basically planned on involving his community in suicidal ideation. In fact, there have been occasions on stream, uh, in his, in his long, long history on the internet where he's basically said, if people don't start donating and watching more of my videos, I'll have to kill myself. And that is like... It's so bad. It's such a not good thing to do. It is it, like, I completely understand the anxiety behind like losing views or having your channel be threatened. You guys know I'm not even, I've never had a uh, hundred thousand subscribers, let alone a million subscribers. I run a, 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 a successful, but a fairly small channel. Um, and I've had some moments uh, in, in my short career where um, people false reported my channel. It's, it's incredibly um, anxiety inducing, but it's not okay to like, like to basically put the onus for your life, your suicide potentially that you're talking about onto your audience at large. It is such an irresponsible and unhealthy thing to do. And this isn't the first time that's happened. So this is why I say that like the whole Boogie situation is so complicated and it's so people who followed Boogie for a long time, a lot of them have just completely checked out which also is reflected in his view counts. Um, yeah, it's it's a form of abuse. Yeah, but it's abuse that's being done to a massive audience of hundreds of thousands of people. Mother Mir set with the gifted tier one membership on the Demon Mama YouTube page. Mother Mir set, thank you so very much for gifting a tier one membership. Thank you so much. LB says, I am a boogie historian. LB says he always had a kind of self-deprecating routine that was an unhealthy way of coping. It went beyond self-deprecation. It wasn't just like he he made self-deprecating jokes. There are a ton of comedians that whose whole routine is doing like self-deprecating stuff. Um, he went beyond that to projecting his mental health problems, which oftentimes were uh, either untreated or at the very least unchecked. Uh, onto his audience at large and and sort of implying that the audience was to blame um, Which is in my opinion again, just another thing. That's just not okay to do Yeah, let's continue anyway uh, Don't think I did very well while live streaming towards the end of 2019 I said that the people who had spent the last three or four years harassing me 
and um, attacking me and writing my sponsors and making me feel like shit every day. I felt that those people were worse than, um, well, the worst people in history. I think you know who I'm talking about here. I said that they were worse than Nazis. Which, I, in retrospect, I think was meant to be hyperbolic, but you can't say that type of thing. And I knew when this came out of my mouth on live stream, it was time to quit. It was time to go get help. Uh, because I desperately needed it. If you go back and look at Christmas of 2019, I barely uploaded any videos. I also quit live streaming. And anyone will tell you that time of year is the time of year that YouTubers need to live stream. We need to make our videos because that's when the advertisements are the highest. But I had to take a break because if I had not taken that break, I, I don't know what would have happened. And that break extended into 2020. And I think you all remember what happened in the early of 2020. Things just kind of went to shit. <laughs> so I thought that was the perfect opportunity to continue to climb into therapy and try to get better. During 2020, there was a huge gold rush that everyone was taking advantage of. Streamers were streaming we for 12 hours a day. Content creators who could travel went where they could. The rest of us filmed in our homes and everybody that was stuck at home watched this stuff. And I did not participate in it. I didn't live stream except maybe once a month or every couple of months. I made like one video a week and it was always just a personal rambling video. I was focused on my therapy and I was focused on getting better and I did not take advantage of that time. And that's probably one of my biggest regrets financially, but mentally I'm really, really glad I did it because I came out of it on the other side a little bit better. Then towards the end of 2020, when I started feeling a little bit better, I uh, had a pretty major setback, I think it's the easiest way to put it. Somebody who had been harassing me online for quite some time decided to get on a plane in the middle of a pandemic and fly to my town and start harassing me here in my hometown. And I ended up on a podcast with him where I said some really terrible, terrible things. And when he came to my property the next day, I handled the situation very, very poorly. I would say if you ever needed proof that I am not mentally well, that's probably all the proof you'll ever need. But the courts don't care about that kind of thing. When you break the law, you've broken the law. So there's a real chance you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And I spent tens of thousands of dollars keeping my ass out of jail. As a result of all this trouble, my lawyer advised me to continue to lay low and try to lay even lower. Live stream less, post more videos, get out of the public eye so that we had a better chance of me not going to jail. And it took about a year for us to get a deal from the prosecutor, but we finally got it and we finally took it and I was free to start posting again. And that's been about a year since then. So in March of 2020... Yeah, he did actually fire, uh, if I remember correctly, he did actually fire the gun into the air, um, which is a decision. That was a a decision uh but again uh deranged behavior that he's had to deal with like having a stalker come to your house is deranged uh it's it, that's horrible to have to deal with um but yeah i feel bad for him more than anything well that's the problem there is this perpetual back and forth with boogie where um like uh oh hey thank you um there's this perpetual back and forth with boogie uh where uh yeah i know we got onto the topic of boogie i know somebody made me watch the boogie rap and now i'm subjecting them to talking about the history my my memory of the history of boogie and watching this video that he put out that got basically no views which is wild the first time i learned about the cord ring was because he made a video about me after i quote tweeted boogie <laughs> Wait, the quartering made a video about you? It doesn't exist anymore, but yeah. I didn't even know this history. You quote tweeted Boogie two ninety eight, and the quartering made a video yeah. about you. It was after it was after Boogie went on to H three and said oh that, the gay marriage thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was upset about it years ago or whatever, and yeah. and and <laughs> that's deranged. And I got a video made about me. That's wild. I did not even know that. <laughs> that's that's do lore even I didn't know. I love you. <sighs> um oh yeah the back and forth with boogie is that um every single time you start to feel bad for him he does some insanely fucked up shit that makes you go 
maybe this guy just needs to find a way to get out of the public eye. And the thing is, he's like a, he was at least at one point a multimillionaire. Um, he could have exited the YouTube business basically at any point, but um, I don't know if we're gonna talk about it in this video, but he would constantly make really, really, really poor financial decisions, which he would then sort of blame on other people. It was a constant problem. Like at one point he bought a, he, he had been complaining about financial issues and then he chose very publicly to buy a Tesla in cash. I think it was a Tesla. Um, and then he went into, and then he went into to crypto and he tried to get his audience into crypto. It's the Boogie 2988 experience is a very strange one. Yeah, the Tesla incident. I don't think it was a Cybertruck, was it? Was it a Cybertruck? Yeah, he, oh yeah. And then when he realized how much it cost, instead of like taking the, the, the Tesla back, he instead, uh, he instead uh, like shook down his chat He's like, I'm in so much trouble, you guys. I bought a Tesla with cash. You guys got to donate like crazy to help me pay for it. Help me. Let's continue. Do I started making videos again, and I discovered I have no clue what the hell I'm doing. YouTube had completely changed. The market was ridiculously saturated. People's opinion of me was lower than it had ever been. Most people had forgotten I existed, and they forgot to watch me altogether. And my new content just did not look like current YouTube. There were so many other people to watch and they were doing such a better job of it. I spent the last year trying to figure it out and I'm sitting here now in 2023 telling you I'm still no closer to figuring it out now than I was back then. I have made some Francis sketches but honestly the people that watched that growing up just don't care to watch it anymore and I don't really look the part as much as I used to and these sketches are still really fun to make for nostalgic reasons but they're never going to get the views that they used to. I'm not that good of an actor, I'm not that funny looking anymore, and I'm not that funny of a writer, so this is just kind of a thing I do to entertain myself. Has the fundamental way of, of YouTube changed? Oh yeah, YouTube is, is nothing like it used to be. Um, and it changes constantly. Um, YouTube is constantly changing what is valued, and that completely changes the type of videos that you're supposed to make. Um, do you guys remember like not all that long ago, not all that lo lo not all that long ago on YouTube, it was ideal to make sure that your videos basically cross the 10 minute mark and almost no more. The ideal video in the YouTube algorithm was a video that was like 10 minutes and 15 seconds. So there would be a ton of videos that just like padded out the last like two minutes of the video because they were trying to make a short video, but they needed it to be over 10 minutes. And also you, if your video was too long, then it wouldn't be good. So if your video was like more than 15 minutes, then it wasn't as good for the algorithm. Algorithm. So yeah, YouTube completely and utterly changes the way that content, like the way that content is chosen. And um, it makes it really hard for YouTubers to adapt um, to the degree that sometimes you just can't adapt. Sometimes there's no real way to, without completely and fundamentally changing what you're doing, it can be really hard to keep up. Now, that of course is alleviated if you have a channel with you know, 4 million subscribers, you can technically continue making money doing all kinds of different stuff, even if it's not as successful as it used to be. But um, for a lot of smaller channels, uh, it is absolutely true that YouTube can make a change that can basically end your career. It's an, it's an incredibly, um, it's an incredibly, uh, uh, What's the word that I'm looking Precarious is the word that I'm looking for. It's an incredibly pr precarious career path, um, which I recognize all the time. Um, something I have to think about all the time. Uh, but yeah, it, it, yes, it's it's all over the place. Now we're getting short content is popular again. For a while, long co content was really popular. I mean, you guys remember there were a bunch of channels that did like four hour videos that did really well because for a while YouTube really liked the long videos because they were favoring watch time. So if you made a video that was five hours long, even if less people watched it, if the watch time was high, it was great. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. So anyway, let's continue. Let's continue.
more than anything else and the fact that a handful of people are entertained makes me happy but this certainly isn't going to be something that gets people to watch again I don't think. I do still like posting my life updates and talking about myself and situations that I've been in telling stories and stuff along that lines but because people think so weirdly about me they have so many just opinions that aren't close to my reality a lot of the stuff comes across as disingenuous or fake people think uh, people would say the same thing about boogie too like um like it, that goes two ways uh the down the, the double-edged sword of being a highly parasocial public figure where you are constantly um, constantly giving people a ton of insight into your personal life, the personal problems, your divorce, is that, of course, people are going to come to their own conclusions about your life. Um, but also, like, he also chose to make the videos of that level of... Per it's, again... It's a it's so complicated. His story is so weird, and there are so many decisions that are just like, why did it go this way? What were you thinking with this? Why why did you think it was a good idea to like try and offload your your bad decision of buying a Tesla with cash onto your audience? Things like that. Yeah. I think I'm a liar or a monster or a wife beater or just a manipulator, or whatever it is, and. And when they watch these videos, they just, I don't know, they have a very negative response to it. If you want proof of that, check this comment section and you'll see a lot of those people telling me how wrong I am about my own life and my own life story. And that's just weird to me. Well, but but e even in this video, though, he admitted that he lied like crazy and was a giant asshole on the Internet and did manipulative things. So, of course, like... There are always going to be haters, but there are also people that he just deliberately misled and and treated poorly. Ah, it's so complicated. It's proof that... And also, this video is called Boogie2988, the YouTuber who lost it all. But just remember, he didn't lose it all. He still has his channel, and he still has 4.06 million subscribers. So... He didn't really lose it all. In fact, arguably, he hasn't even lost that much in the big picture. Although I will say his videos are getting significantly less views. A 4 million subscriber channel and his latest video only got 2.2 thousand views in three hours. That is... That's kind of wild, actually. That's kind of... That's kind of wild that that's the case. I mean, he has videos that are still making him money to this day. Like, I mean, this video has 39 million views. This one has 25 million views. I think things did get pretty rough. Yeah, but they got pretty rough because he died. He decided to jump into scam crypto that he tried to pull his audience into. He didn't look, but, and he still has a 4 million YouTube channel. Like he, there's, you, you're telling, I'm sorry. I, I, I have a hard time believing that, that you, that if you were given a, a YouTube channel with 4.02 million subscribers, that you couldn't find a way to make a living. I just don't believe the idea that he lost it all. Like, it is true that he's lost a lot of things. Um, but, but it's just like, at the same time, he still has a 4.02 million channel. He hasn't lost it all. And he shouldn't pretend that he's lost it all when he hasn't because that also that also makes people go dude what the fuck is wrong with this guy he's 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 lost perspective you know it's 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 really complicated yeah my channel has a higher has a higher social blade ranking than his channel